Okay, so right now we've got a little bit of an issue. We've got to lay out the one inch strap that's going to reinforce this soft oil tan leather. Okay, and so we want to make sure that we're sort of matching the similar template that we have uh, seen in the pink pouch and also lay out enough material so that when we stitch down our seam line to hold the thigh straps, we have room for the leather strapping to actually fit through. And one of the things to consider, of course, is when you're putting a one inch strap through a piece of material, the distance between your stitch seams needs to be a little bit more than one inch, right? Because there needs to be room for the thickness of the strap that's going through, which is generally an eighth inch on either side. So you gotta go an eighth inch longer. And then you want it to slide through fluidly. So you end up adding a little over a quarter of an inch to a half inch, depending on the thickness of your material and how loose you want it to be. So that being said, the first thing we're gonna need to do is rip a one inch strip that's gonna match what we have for the pink section and then determine how we're gonna lay out the footprint for this little back region. So let's start with a one inch strip. Just to conserve the length, we're gonna collect as much as we can. And I'll grab my heart stop to make life easy. Line it up flush. Grab the rotary cutter like so. Make sure everything is lined up and I'm pressing down on the ruler as well as the rotary cutter in small six inch intervals to make sure that our one inch strap is our one inch strap. And what we may find is when we go to do the perforations across this section here we're gonna trim down this purple so that it fits flush by hand. And that may be done with an X-Acto blade, the rotary cutter, or um, sometimes just the leather scissors. It really just depends. So now that we have that established, we know we can start our mounting point down here in the middle of our pouch. And we'll have to trim out what we need for this perimeter. So I'm going to go make a paper template and we'll check back after that. So at this point we're trying to figure out what the perimeter looks like on the pink pouch, which is this white paper template that transfers enough room for the rulers to go through. So we only need a width as wide as this paper here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to mark that on our leather and then just trim it so we know we have a standard width okay and for those of you wondering the width here is just four inches so pretty easy to keep track of and then the other dimension where the two straps go over comes out to be a little bit weird but I wanted to just have everyone see how that works in terms of testing it out before and after to make sure that once you get your stitching seam in line uh, you're gonna get the behavior that you expect so we're ripping off our four inch section it's right here and now we can cut this to width whenever we need you know we can make sure that our straps work but we've got two one inch steel rulers here and what I'm doing is I'm just laying them so that they're going parallel right and then I'm pressing another piece in, and this is representative of the material we lose when we lay down a stitch between one piece of leather and another. And so you can see that as that's happening, the gap between the leather and the rulers doesn't always go flush. And although the leather, when you slide a belt in, is gonna be more compliant, it's not gonna be much more compliant than the piece of steel if you want it to flow seamlessly. So one of the things I always consider is theoretically we have our piece of paper right and it's indexed right here and here and it is just over three inches wide it's not quite three and a half I believe it's three and three eighths of an inch and it's because each time we add a little bit of material right the rulers themselves are two inches and then we have a whole nother inch and three eighths that we lose. So that's divided among the three. 
And so you want to make sure that when you have all of your material there present and you put your anchoring part where your stitching seam is going to be down the middle, you have enough room on either side. So we can probably get away with a little bit less, maybe three inches but we don't want to push it too far because we do need that extra eighth of material on either end of our stitch. Our stitch itself is going to be another eighth inch wide and then an eighth on either end as well. So we have three stitches, that's three eighths of an inch, and then we have one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth is four eighths. So that is seven eighths of an inch we end up adding. So if you cut it to three inches, you're going to be almost exactly perfect, but there won't be much room for error. So we're going to give a little bit more than that and go with the three and a quarter to three eighths gap that we have. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just measure this and make sure that we're accurate. Here we go. So we'll go to three and a quarter. So that is 16 60 fourths, which is right here. And we'll check on the same side. Okay. Right there. So we're going to that inside line, lining it up, and then we cut. One more time. Oh, goodness me. Much better. So now that we have that piece cut out, we're ready to start punching holes along this line and then transferring them into the body. You can do this all at once if you need to, or you can do it later. But we now have our first one inch strip and our back piece that are ready to cut and we can follow up by making these two which are just one inch strips right so you can always cut them shorter so i just leave them long and then round the corners that i'm stitching down okay. and what i'll do is i'll cut these to match the curve of the leather that i have for the hip slung part of the pouch